This video is going to discuss form fields. I've gone ahead and typed some notes up here on the website just so you have some reference material as we discuss this. Um, essentially, forms are an excellent way to reverse the flow of information on a website because instead of the traditional situation where we are pushing content uh, out to our visitors, we're able to get some sort of feedback or information from them. The first thing that we want to do when we create a form is to go to the insert menu and pick from form. We want to make sure that we pick actually form first. There's this temptation to just jump right in and start to choose some of these other fields, but we need to select form first. What this does, and it's a little bit um, invisible to us, but if you're actually looking at the code, this created the open and closing form tag, which is essential to have wrapped around our form. So that's why it was important for us to make sure that when we did this, when we chose form first. All of my form fields are here under form on the insert tab. We just wanted to make sure that we had chosen chosen that one first. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is start to add some of the various different fields. For instance, I might add a text field. A text field allows us to type text in a box. We could use one line or multiple lines. Uh, we could change that after the fact. But I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. Maybe I would just call this first name. Whether or not the label is going to be before or after the item, this is something that is discussed in the accessibility guidelines on the WAI page. Having these labels before the form item is generally considered to be the more accessible option. I'm not going to discuss this access key and tab index right now, but uh, later in the course, after we finish uh, phase three, we will see that there is a way to add keyboard shortcuts to our forms, and that's what, what that's getting into. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we'll see that ended. We'll go ahead and try another one. Let's put it on its own line. So the ID area, uh, it just needs to be unique. The label area is the portion that actually appears on the website. And Let's see when we select these items. Notice the property inspector changed, and this is where I could have said that, oh, somebody would have 50 characters to type in, or that I wanted this to be on multiple lines, which is a little bit silly for the last name, but if we wanted to do something that corresponded with reality a little bit, we maybe would have an address field. I'm going to call this address one. We'll see why in a moment. Yeah, I want to give them three lines with 50 characters per line, which seems a little bit excessive for a street address. Actually, I don't want to get too, I want to be too liberal here because I might have convinced somebody to put in more information than they needed to. Notice if this is going to, if I had selected password, that means that when somebody fills out the form, if I go over to my live view, uh, you'll see that when somebody fills out, they uh, don't actually see the characters. So it's not actually, this is getting a little bit off topic, but it's not actually um, secure. It's just that uh, 
if we had selected when we had, if we had selected the password area here, it just the text wouldn't actually visibly uh, appear. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's go ahead and choose the list or menu area. Down in the property inspector, I can specify. Just use the plus sign here. Oops. Go into live view so you can see that the select or list or menu is just allowing an uh, individual to choose from a list of options. Oops, let me turn off the live view. I wanted us to also look at radio buttons and check boxes. A lot of people use these interchangeably, but they should be used for specific situations. A radio button is when somebody can only choose one option, where they can't choose more than one. They had to, you know, it's, it was this or that, period. Uh, in fact, when you're selecting through radio buttons, you will see that uh, as you select one, the, the others disappear. So I'm going to go to insert form. I have radio button, but I also have radio group. Radio group will allow me to uh, create multiple radio buttons at a time instead of having to individually go through this each time. I'm going to go ahead and pick radio group. So notice again here, this was a situation where uh, I can only choose one, one item. So maybe the, the question here would be like a Remember, label is the portion that the individual sees on the website. So. probably enough. There is a reason to change these values, even though they're in the back end and you're thinking that you're not actually seeing them. The reason to change these has to do with if this was actually going to be a functional form when we were done. Um, if it was actually going to integrate with the database, I would need to be using unique values here. After the fact, you can reorder uh, the the items in your group and I could decide whether or not I wanted BR tags in between them or which is just a line break or if I wanted them to be organized in a table. Anyway, so that's my radio group. If I go to live view, you'll see that when items are selected, I, you know, if I select this date and then I go, oh no, I want this one, I can't actually, um, excuse me, I can't actually select more than one. I could only have, have selected one. Okay. And then the checkbox means that you can select multiple items. Like maybe we wanted to talk about things that we wanted for lunch. When on this order form of items that we want for lunch, uh, we could select like a salad and a sandwich and, you know, 
uh, multiple items. So I'm going to use the checkbox group. It would just be a little bit quicker. I don't know if I'm spelling that right, so let's just pick something else. What's going on here? I think I'm having a little... Oh, there we go. What's I don't know what's happening with my machine there. As you can see, it's sort of overlapping. And I'm just going to put numbers on the end of these uh, just to save me some time. Um, this form that I'm creating here is not actually going to be integrated with the database, but if it was, we'd want all these to be unique. So it's better for me to just get in a habit of doing that anyway. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice that when you use these items, you um, can actually select, oops, let me go into live view and show you. I could actually say that I wanted to select more than one. In the property inspector, when you've selected these, like let's say the default was water and a salad. I could actually default these to being checked, which could be, um, it could just save me some time if the majority of people are going to pick that. For instance, let's say that this was like a form for a family reunion, for the Smith's family reunion. And most of the people had the last name Smith. Of course, not everybody in the family has the last name Smith, but most of them probably have that last name. So I can default to this. Now people could of course change this but by including that Smith there and items checked by default, it just makes it a little bit easier for them to fill out the form. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of this. And I'm gonna insert my last component here, which is going to be a button. A button performs a specific action. So we might have, for instance, a button for submit. We might have a button for clear or reset is another phrase that's commonly seen there. Now this is going to create the text before the button. A lot of people want to delete this, although the WAI, that recommendation for accessibility, is to keep that before the, the graphic for the, the button. You can see the, the actions down below. Okay, so that pretty much sums up this topic. We were just looking at the individual form fields that we were allowed to, that we, that we had here under the insert form is when we're going to see all of our uh, options for the form. We could see definitions of them and just get a sense of when we would, for instance, use the radio button instead of check boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here.